I should mention that uh, Sweeney, up until this time, was a theistic evolutionist. Uh, so she did believe in evolution and God at the same time. Uh, but um, uh, she does, at the same time, seem to use evolution to show her audience that she did consider apologetic arguments for theism before deconverting, uh, away from theism. And uh, that is at least what I take her discussion of the ID movement and her boyfriend who was involved with that. Uh, that that's how I took that discussion, though I could have misread what she was trying to say there. She makes ID say something it doesn't, and then rejects that, the the the, the straw man. Uh, but this commits the straw man fallacy. I do not wish to imply that she is intentionally trying to deceive us. She no doubt genuinely misunderstood the ID movement. Uh, but that is the whole point I am trying to make, namely that her entire case against the existence of God is based on misunderstandings, caricatures, and half-truths uh, of the ID movement, of the Bible itself, and so on. So that is the first problem, namely that she misunderstands what she no longer believes. The second problem is that the logical argument behind her deconversion is a non-sequitur. Here is the argument expressed formally. Premise 1. There is no good evidence for the existence of God. Conclusion. Therefore, God certainly does not exist. Uh, premise 1. There is no good evidence for the existence of God. Conclusion. Therefore, God certainly does not exist. You don't have to be a professional logician to see the fallacy here. Premise 1 is manifestly false, as I argue elsewhere. Uh, in my series on YouTube, A Proof of Christianity uh, is one example where I argue that. Uh, but even if the premise were true, the conclusion in no way follows. Not having sufficient reason to believe X, whatever X may be, some belief, that does not give us sufficient reason to believe not X. I'm going to say that again. Not having sufficient reason to believe X does not give us sufficient reason to believe not X. So lacking evidence for is not evidence against. And it seems that a large part of what Julia is saying in her monologue is that she used to believe in God, but then she grew older and started thinking for herself. And because of her newfound reason, uh, uh, she can no longer believe in God. Uh, so as a child, she just took what was told her by her elders and so on, which of course we all do. And then as she gets older, she starts to, to think for herself. So. So that, that this is something that we, that we all do. Uh, but the, the problem is if she is, is now using reason, she should be reasonable in the reason she is using. And the above argument is diametrically opposed to sound reason. Uh, again, the conclusion does not follow from the premise. As I said before, Julia is not a professional philosopher. For this reason, it is easy to forgive her for making basic logic blunders. Indeed, even professional philosophers and professional logicians make non sequiturious arguments on occasion, if non sequiturious is a real word, a real Latin term. Uh, but the fact remains that the conclusion does not follow from the premise. The argument is therefore unsound. So Julia is not rationally justified nor epistemically justified in no longer believing God exists or uh, in believing that God does not exist. Julia, if you are watching this, uh, please understand that I am trying to speak rationally here, not emotionally. I have no desire to hurt your feelings or call your sincerity into question uh, or the seriousness which you pursued this question. Uh, but what you are claiming in your book is factually incorrect. While you may have let go of God, God has not let go of you. And if you are not Julia Sweeney, uh, which will be uh, most of the people who watch this, and, and I don't pretend that uh, uh, somebody like Julia Sweeney would actually, uh, you know, somebody that's famous and, and so on, would, uh, would, would actually, you know, watch what I'm saying here, watch this video. Um, but, but, but if you're not watch, but if you're not Julia Sweeney and you are watching this video, Please understand that lacking evidence for 
is not possessing evidence against. And uh, Veritas, Telemantros, and Dawa Films have some videos, The Presumption of Atheism, you may want to watch um, along, along that same uh, theme. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Uh, but, but, but again, if you're not Julius Sweeney, but you're watching this video, uh, lacking evidence for is not possessing evidence against. And if you have left the faith you once held, the Christian faith, or are thinking about leaving the Christian faith, make sure that you first understand what it is that you disagree or are about to disagree with. Uh, so if you're thinking of, of leaving the faith or you already have left the faith, uh, it should be for the right reasons, namely that it is not true and that you can that you have sufficient reason because of a proper understanding of what it is you're denying that it is that it is false. So if you're going to leave the faith, make sure that the faith is not true. Contrary to what Miss Sweeney seems to think, Christianity is actually open to rational scrutiny, and that's both by those within and those without the sheepfold. By all means, check out both sides for yourself, a case for Christianity and a case against Christianity. Hear me now and believe me later, as Hans and Franz used to say on SNL when Sweeney was on it as well, uh, playing Pat and other characters. Uh, uh, hear me now and believe me later, Christianity has stood firm against the wind and the waves for two millennia. It is the anvil that wears out the hammers you know.